this is a continuation of the video about the gasifier which produces carbon dioxide for greenhouses. The link to the previous video is in the description underneath. In the last video, I showed an article about a new gasifier on the market which burns wood chips on the flare to produce carbon dioxide. Gas and carbon dioxide have become an expensive, sometimes even scarce product abroad as the supply does not meet the growing demand. I decided to make another video as I came across the company's page on social media with photos of their work on this model. I decided to dig through the pictures. I will show them to you and will tell my thoughts on what I have seen and written. Let me remind you that plants are almost half carbon, which they need to build themselves. They actively absorb it from the carbon dioxide in the air. The more light, the better they absorb it. By increasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the greenhouse by 2 to 2.5 times, we kind of intensively feed the plants, in layman's terms. The video shows the growth of plants in the open air and indoors, where we increase the amount of carbon dioxide. Let's go back to the European system. It looks like this. First, they used a compressor to pump gas through the system, if I understand correctly, then they switched to a blower, which have the electricity consumption. Apparently, their system is quite resistant, you'll see why soon. There is a heat exchanger on the output to the greenhouse, it's in the photo, apparently tubular. Carbon dioxide must be cooled before entering the greenhouse so as not to damage the plants. During testing, the project instrument engineer had to redesign and improve the control system to make it fully automated and non-stop. The development engineer tested the pilot appliance for a long time and is now responsible for scaling it up. Here are pellets developed and patented by the company. The company's representatives say that the pellets, consisting of a mixture of limestone, metal oxide, and some secret ingredients, act like a sponge, selectively absorbing carbon dioxide, CO2, which is ready to be released on demand. This is what their gasifier looks like. And this is what the pellet container looks like. The point, I repeat, is to supply carbon dioxide in the daytime, when there is light needed for its assimilation, and heat is needed at night to warm the greenhouse. There is no light at night, and there is no need to give carbon dioxide at night, so it is stored in the pellets until morning. The bricks are placed in the container so that there is a layer, apparently for thermal insulation, between the floor and the walls. This bushed box holds 8 tons of carbon dioxide absorbing pellets. Hot carbon dioxide enters the pellet box, rather it is the outlet, through a series of channels, as we can see. The designers of this box spent hundreds of hours checking its hydraulic resistance and testing the prototype. Now some figures, it is customary to feed greenhouses with about twice the amount of carbon dioxide that is in the air. Many tests have shown that maximum plant growth occurs at about 1000 to 1200 parts per million, or ppm, in the air. For example, we have 380 ppm of carbon dioxide in the air. If you translate this into understandable numbers, it means 380 milliliters per 1 cubic meter of air, almost 2 glasses of carbon dioxide per 1000 liters. A greenhouse needs about 6 cups, i.e. about 1.1 liters of carbon dioxide. 1 cubic meter of carbon dioxide weighs 1.96 kilograms. About 1.8 kilograms of carbon dioxide is produced from 1 kilogram of wood by gasification and subsequent burning. Thus, we can estimate how many kilograms of wood we have to burn in a gasifier to fill a greenhouse of a certain volume. For example, for a 500 cubic meter greenhouse, we have to supply 0.55 cubic meters of carbon dioxide or burn about half a kilo of wood per hour. So, in the picture, you can see a huge greenhouse and, as you can see, a small gasifier. In the nighttime, the gasifier burns gas, and the pellets absorb carbon dioxide. The heat exchanger outputs the heat to the greenhouse after the pellet box. When morning comes, the pellets release carbon dioxide into the greenhouse. I don't know what triggers the process of releasing carbon dioxide from pellets. Perhaps the air is just blown through the box and the pellets release CO2 naturally like a soda bottle after opening. The developers cited figures a few months before the war in Ukraine. In the UK, the price of CO2 jumped from 200 to 1,000 pounds per ton, and for natural gas, four times. In Ukraine, the price of gas rose fivefold. Gas was the main fuel for industrial greenhouses to produce carbon dioxide. The authors explicitly say that increasing costs will bring the Ukrainian industrial greenhouses to bankruptcy. Let me remind you that this was the situation even before the war. As we can see, the gas generator is very small, most of the appliance consists of a carbon dioxide holder. 
what would I do? If I had no such pellets and the customers would not be willing to pay for such systems, I would do the following. In the daytime, I would output carbon dioxide from the burner into the greenhouse, and when night comes, I would switch the carbon dioxide exhaust to the outside and take the heat from the gas with a water heat exchanger to heat the greenhouse, or just air the greenhouse, and it won't cost much. People used to do so before, they burned gas and released carbon dioxide in the greenhouse without any pellets. I'm not a prophet, but I think almost all industrial greenhouses have stopped now. Why not build such a useful and economical plant for yourself? My WhatsApp is in the description under the video. See you soon.